Well, hey there, it's Sandy with more of the 24 tags of Christmas of 2020. I'm going to do watercolor bunny tags today using the Snow Happy stamp set. Lots of people have wanted to see more of this. I've put it into one of the, the little frames that goes with the Anita Jerome sets and thought it would be fun to do that for tags and just use little sticky notes to make a curve so I could stamp that bunny in there. Did four of them on one sheet of watercolor paper. I'm going to do something really easy. I'm just going to paint some color in the background. You could do this with any colors and see what you like. You can test them out on scrap paper and see how the colors mix. I love cobalt teal blue along with quinacridone rose. The two colors make a really lovely purple when they meet in the middle. And on something like this, whether you get the blending perfect and smooth or not, you know, might might be an easy thing to do, might be hard to do, but you can add lots of snow right where any of the colors join that doesn't look really great, and that will cover it up, but you still get that pop of some beautiful color in behind the little bunny rabbit holding the snowball. Each of the bunnies I just painted in different ways with different browns and blacks that are in my palette, and the bunny is really small, so there's not a whole lot to do with it, just painting him, leaving kind of some white in the ears that I can add some pink into later, as well as white on the belly and a little bit of white on the face, and then add some color elsewhere. Remember, these are tags. These are not artworks that anybody's going to keep forever. So I like finding some quick ways to make some tags that are really cute for the packages, and yet they're not going to take a ton of time in order to make them. But they'll still be fun to make because making things is kind of the point. For me, I like to spend my time making handmade things. So just because it's a quick thing doesn't mean I don't want to have fun doing it. And being able to watercolor is always a good thing in my book. So each one of my bunnies is different. I even made one that's a black bunny. He got too dark. So I used a clean brush that I had gotten most of the water off of and just kind of did a little lifting so that I would have some gray areas in there painting in a little bit of pink into the ears and then added some of the cobalt teal blue into the scallops around the outside edges. And for each one of these, I just kind of went around all four stamped images so that I could do little bits and not, not be dealing with wet paint bleeding into wet paint. So just kept moving around to paint all the different phases on each one. And then I took my white pen after everything was dry and did varying levels of snow. Now, if you're less happy with the way that the colors blended, add more snow. If you love the way it blended, add less snow, bigger flakes. And it will just cover up whatever's going on in the background quite easily. And you can put the snow over top of the bunny in order to... Make it look like it's, you know, snowing on all sides of the bunny. Or you can just put it in the background if you want your bunny to stand out. I'm going to add a little bit to him. If he's a really light color, you won't see a whole lot of the snow. So just be aware of that. And then I'm going to use the Tag Trio little circle because it's perfect for the outside of these. Lines up just right. Die cut that puppy and the tags are all finished. And very cute and bright and happy. Now you can use all different kinds of colors for this. Let me know what colors you would like to try in your sky because I think it would be kind of fun to see what different people's choices would be. Now for the larger image, I'm going to do something very similar. And I'm going to show you how I did the snow on this one because it may not be as intuitive. I tried explaining it in a previous video when I announced all the Anita Jerome stamps. And this will hopefully show you visually what I meant when I was trying to explain that. The same bunny is in this one, but it's a tinier bunny. The other bunny is larger physically in size that's on the tag. So this bunny is a, a wee bit smaller. And I'm just going to paint the background with two different colors the same way as I did. Same two colors, cobalt teal blue and quinacridone rose. And... It's a little harder to do them a little bit larger and to try to get those colors to mix. I spent a good bit of time fussing around with these, trying to make sure that, say, if, if I was trying to picture the color flowing from 
one side of the deer to the other that I connected those colors. So if you have pink on one side, have a little pink on the other side before it totally changes into another color. Because you don't want it to look like there was a hard seam somewhere in the background, as, as if the whole sky was one unit and that the deer is standing in front of it. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. If you're looking to just have purple in the sky, then you could mix a purple in your palette. I wanted the change of colors from the pink to the cobalt teal blue and the, the two to just mix on the paper in different ways. So it almost looks like there's a moving sky with clouds and things in it. So that's why I'm mixing it wet in wet. But that can be a challenge. So I just want to let you know about that. In order to get some of this to mix, because there's some colors that are kind of collecting around the edge of the image, I then started tapping the, the paper a little bit and turning it so that the colors would run into the areas that I wanted them to and blend the way that I would be happy with. When that was done, I added a little bit of color into the snow at the bottom, just so that I would have some of the same colors. So I'm going to use the same ones that are in my palette, the cobalt teal blue. And then I decided to even add a little bit of the pink to it because even though, you know, pink snow would be a little bit weird, I now know that the two of them together make a purple. So I can add just a little tiny bit of it in the darkest shadow areas and end up with something that's going to match the background color. Now for the tree, I'm going to, I mixed up a dark brown color and I'm painting it right over top of the color that I've already got in the background. Now that's one reason you want to know what color you're going to do the background in before you do this. If you want a pale tree, you're going to need to paint around that. But since I knew I wanted to do a dark tree and I wanted to put snow on it, it didn't matter. I could paint that background straight through because it's really hard to paint a consistent background if you're going around something that's that detailed and fussy of an outline. So next comes up the animals that need to be painted. So I'm going to use some yellow ochre, mix in a little bit of burnt sienna, just kind of playing around with what kinds of colors to use for my deer. And then I'm going to paint the top side of the deer. I mentioned in a previous video that a lot of animals have white bellies, white underbellies, and the outsides of them are dark. So what we're going to do here is the outer body of the deer and the legs that are facing forward, the legs that are facing the viewer, are going to be the brown. The legs that are behind are white because that's the underside. And I know there's some sort of scientific reason as to why this is, you know, maybe so that little, little baby deer can look up and see mama's belly or something because it's white. I don't, I don't know what the reason is. I'm sure there's something though. <laughs> but you want to leave the, the tummy white and the under undersides of the legs, the insides of the legs will be white. And then with the bunny, we're also going to leave the belly and a little bit of the face white so that there's just a little bit of that, that under tummy showing. And with each one of these, you can also paint in some darker shadows by dropping color in wet in wet, like I'm doing here. And that's going to add some shadow that's just going to mix in with the color while it's wet. If you don't do it while it's wet, you're not going to get a lot of soft blending. You may have to do some fussing with your brush to move that color around. But if it's still decently wet, then that dark color will move through it. I wanted to do the same thing with the deer. So I'm going to put some of the darkest color up on top. And then I'm going to mix up another color because I want my deer to feel a little warmer than this. So I've used a little bit of Aussie red gold to put in here with, with my yellow ochre. And that's going to give it a much warmer color. My paint underneath is still somewhat wet, so I'm getting some nice blending. But this is putting in much denser color, so it's going to stand out more. So after that, you need to wait and get everything all nice and dry. White pen is not going to work really well on wet paper. So that's why you want it to be good and dry. And I'm adding some white snow onto the tops of each one of the branches, both the little branches, the big branches, any leaves. And yes, I'm adding some spots onto my deer. I know that it's just the baby fawns that tend to have the white spots. 
And I always have somebody commenting on my YouTube videos <laughs> complaining about that, that grown deer don't have them. But I'm putting them on anyway because I think it adds a nice detail that you don't get otherwise. And then for the background, anywhere where the background didn't blend the way that you like it, this is a great time to add snow in there and hide any areas that didn't make you happy. So there you go. I will uh, link at the end of this to my original video with all of my Anita Jerome stamped images on it so you can see other ways to paint these and other ways to do that outside background. This one just has a hard outline, but in the other video you'll see how to make a soft edged background around the outside. To finish off my card, I just added a pink layer to draw out some of the pink color in the background and then used a navy blue card base to set it off and add some pop and contrast. So next I want to show you real quickly the November 2020 release, which comes out today. So even though my videos won't be out till next week, you can get the stamps now and be ready for them by the time the videos come out. So first off, there are two poinsettia stamps. One is a slimline version and the other is called poinsettia blessings, I believe. And you can do them in a whole bunch of different ways, different orientations and everything. I'm doing a slimline card and it, I'm calling it the happiest accident. The card on the bottom was one that I had a big spill in the middle of my card. I did capture it on video. So you'll, in your head, hear me scream. Maybe, hopefully not on the video, but you'll hear me scream because it's like, no, not after all that coloring. But I recovered it. And so you'll see how I did that on the video next week. There's also Frosty's hat, which I think is going to make some fun hat-shaped cards. And new Anita Duram. So this one is called Wonderful Time. It's got three stamps that have mice in them and little fun gifts. The second one is called Christmas Presents, and there's two dogs and one bunny stamp. The bunny one I used for a video that's going to be over on my Instagram and Facebook later on today. So you'll be able to see that one get painted if you like. And then this one, so cute. It's called uh, All Weather Friends. And this little bunny is going to get painted on my YouTube channel. So be sure to come back for that one. It's easier than it looks. All right, don't forget to leave a comment here in order to qualify to win one of the bunny tags. Or you can comment over on my blog. Or you can do both because why not enter twice? It means you have a better chance to win, right? All right, I'll see you guys really soon. Links to everything are in the doobly-doo, and I'll be back tomorrow with more tags. Bye-bye.